Okay, so let me explain the CAT uh, polynomial commitment scheme. Well, and I, I guess I'll just rewrite it here polynomial commitment scheme. So in the previous video, I explained that a polynomial commitment scheme allows you to commit to a polynomial in a way that um, you obtain a commitment that hides the polynomial. So nobody knows what it is, but they, they have something that, you know, uh, is tied to your polynomial. And then they can ask you to evaluate your polynomial at some point, and you can give them that evaluation. So for example, if you have f, um, f of x equal f0 plus f1x plus f2x squared, etc. They can ask you to evaluate that at some point z and you can do that and you can send them the evaluation fz and a proof uh, which I call evaluation proof but you, you usually see that uh, being called an opening usually commitments, uh, you open commitments by revealing uh, what's what's hidden in the commitment, but here we actually don't really open anything. So let's call that a proof um, proof of evaluation. So so Kate is is pairing based. So let's see let's see how that works. Um, so I, I said in the previous video that because it's pairing based, um, you you have to do some trusted setup, and the trusted setup pretty much is to uh, let's write it here. Setup. Um, the setup is to generate. So whoever is going to be in charge of that, sometimes they, they use a multi-party computation so that many people are in charge of that. And as long as one person is honest, then the whole uh, process works. But here, let's just pretend that it's one person. Basically, what they'll do is that they'll generate a random point uh, from, from our field. It's uh, still the same field. Um, we, and the, this field is the field generated by, by the order uh, of a curve, by the way. Um, so I don't want to get too too much into the details of elliptic curves and, and groups and, and stuff like that. Uh, I guess you could use any group, but but pretty much people always use elliptic curves for, for implementing these, instantiating these schemes, so so we'll use that. Uh, so let's say that you have a, you know, um, oops. Let's say that you have a, a curve um, generated by uh, some point g and um, the, the curve it generates is of order um, p uh, prime p so your 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 field is pretty much um, the field uh, created by this uh, this prime p here so anyway first step is to generate this this random elements and second is to release um, pretty much these values g so the, the generator of our group um, s g s square g and here you can write it in you know elliptic curve notation if you want s cube g up until um, some some power of s uh, and usually this is going to uh, pretty much place an upper bound on the degree of the polynomial that you can commit to so we'll see later that it, it doesn't really matter because because you can split a, poly a polynomial into um, different parts. And so that upper bound is not really an, a constraint. It's more of a it's more of a trade-off in, in how long you want your proofs to your, your proofs to be. But I'm not gonna go too much into the details here. You can just imagine that we go up to like some degree degree D. Um, so anyway, yeah the the, this thing becomes the you know the SRS the structured reference uh, string that both the prover and the verifier have, and now if you want to do a commitment, so let me write the commit algorithm here. It's it's going to be very very simple actually. Uh, your the the prover is just going to take the just going to evaluate f of s. Oops, it's just going to evaluate f of s. And to do that, since they don't have access to S, um, if this wasn't clear, the, the, the S value there has been deleted by the, the people who did the tr trusted setup. And so S is unknown um, and protected, you know, thanks to the discrete logarithm problem. And so because we don't know S, we cannot really evaluate F of S like that. We're going to have to use, um, we're going to have to use these hidden powers of S. 
And by the way, some, sometimes people say that uh, these are hidden in the exponents because in in mul uh, multiplicative notation you can write that, um, and so they're they're kind of hidden in the exponent here. But that that doesn't really matter. Just if you've heard that term before, maybe that that helps. Um, so how do we evaluate f of s? Well, we can use the the SRS, and we can we can you know if f is f f0, f1, f2, like these are the coefficients. What we can do is this. We can do uh, f0, g, plus f1, um, and let's call that value, uh, let's call this, you know, t0, t1, um, t2, t3, and so on. So here, you can see this as being g or, or t0, and then we have t1, plus f2, t2, uh, etc. And basically this, so I guess let me replace this with t, t0. And so I guess this thing really is the same as running um, f0, g, plus f1, um, s, g, plus f2, s square, g, and etc. which is exactly the same as writing f0, plus f1 s, plus f2 s square, et cetera, uh, times g. And so here we have it. We have the evaluation of f of s, which we wanted, times g. And so pretty much what it means is that it's the evaluation of f of s is hidden um, behind this, 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 uh, this group element. And so our commitment is pretty much this thing. Uh, and this uh, the, the, this thing here is a curve point. So you can see a commitment as just being a curve point in this uh, Kate uh, polynomial commitment scheme. Okay, I, I hope that made sense because uh, that's the easier part of the scheme. Here's how the um, whoop, uh, evaluation proof works. Evaluation proof. And so so. The trick is that if you take this polynomial f of x minus f of z, and here remember, um, okay, I didn't write that, but we want we want uh, f of z given uh, given z and um, come f come f right come f is this this thing here. Um, so anyway, uh, going back to that polynomial, f of x minus f of z has one root, or at least one obvious root, which is z, right? Uh, if you if you if you put z, you get f of z minus f of z. It's obviously zero. Uh, so so z is a root. That means, uh, as we've seen in a previous video, that you can write it as x minus z because z is a root times some polynomial h of x that that we don't know, or, or that we can easily calculate, I guess. Um, or at least the prover can calculate that by dividing this part with this part. But the verifier cannot calculate because they don't know f of x. Uh, they don't know f. So anyway, with that knowledge in mind, the verifier could say, uh, OK, you, you can give me the evaluation of f of z. But if this is indeed the correct evaluation of f of z, then there there must exist this uh, polynomial h, such that uh, we have this identity. And so, pretty much what what um, the prover can do is to send a commitment to h, and then uh, or or hiding of h, uh, and then the verifier can can verify that. And actually, better than that, uh, with the schwarz zippel lemma that we've seen earlier, we know that this is true. Okay, this is true. If it's true at a random point, um, uh, random point. And here we already have a random point, so we're gonna say yes. So maybe you see where I'm going with this, but basically, the prover sends the verifier uh, commitment to h of s, which they can create you know, exactly in the same way that they created the one for f of s. Um, 
So it's, you know, it'll be like edge zero times t, t zero plus comma of h equals h one times t one, etc. And then the verifier can do this. They can check if the commitment to f of s uh, minus the commitment to f of z. And the commitment to f of z, they can calculate themselves. The commitment of f of s, they already have. It's just a commitment of f uh, is equal to uh, commitment of x minus z. They can calculate themselves as well times uh, commitment of h z, which um, was sent by the prover. Uh, Whoop, it's not hg, sorry, it's hs, uh, which was sent by the prover here. Now, hopefully that makes sense. We have exactly our equation that we had uh, here above, except that we're checking it hidden in a group, um, hidden by the group, uh, group element G. So we're checking things inside commitments. So basically we're, us we're using, you know, uh, commitment A equals commitment B uh, only uh, if and only if or is equivalent to A equals B. And the other thing we're using is the homomorphic uh, addit uh, or the additive homomorphic property of, of the commitments, which is that uh, commitment of A plus commitment of B equals commitment of A plus B. And if you don't know this, or if you don't, um, you know, realize that this part here above is exactly the same as as um, commitment of f of s minus commitment of z, I encourage you to try and find out if you, you know, pause the video and try and, and find out if you, uh, sorry, if you can take these type of commitments and add them together and see if it indeed gives you the commitment of the different stuff uh, separated. Okay, so now uh, there's one more issue is that actually the right hand side, so the left hand side it works because uh, this type of commitments are um, homomorphic for the addition, but for the right hand side we're, we have a multiplication here and things don't work. Um, th this type of commitments are not um, homomorphic for the multiplication. So, so this thing here is not going to be equal to uh, you know what we want, which is com x minus z times h of s. Whoops, it's not even x here, it's s minus z um, times h of s. So that, that we cannot we cannot get uh, just by multiplying commitments. So the only way we can actually uh, get something like that is to use a pairing, which is why we have, uh, why we build uh, the cate polynomial commitment scheme on pairings. And so I'm not going to go into the details of how pairing work, pairings work, uh, but basically it uh, allows you to, to, to uh, if you have a multiplication of, of commitment like that here, it allows you to uh, transform these, these, uh, these kind of things into, uh, into exactly this line here, uh, so that you can check the equality. And you can only do it once, so so it allows you to do one multiplication, and then you get some some sort of garbage that you can use to do uh, comparisons like that, identity uh, checks like this. But you can't do more uh, additions or do more useful stuff uh, on on this thing that you get here. You can just check the identity. Um, so so you can only use that multiplication once, thanks to pairings. Um, cool. So hopefully that made sense. Um, if you want to understand more on how the pairing was used here, uh, it's not necessary to understand, to really understand how that works, uh, but you can check uh, a blog post that I wrote on the subject uh, where I go more into the details uh, and that I'll post in the description of this video. Okay, cool. So now that you know how polynomial commitment works, uh, you know, you know, or at least the Cate one that has a setup, uh, work, uh, you'll see that we can, in the next video, we'll, we'll, we'll have the prover kind of commit to their polynomials, and then the verifier will send a random point, uh, and then uh, we'll 
uh, will evaluate um, the polynomials uh, or the witness polynomials at these random points.